A lot of people helping you later in life do it for no money. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by the new Glassdoor app. Professionals can now join real, anonymous conversations within their company, industry, and communities and get answers about careers on Glassdoor. And by Indeed, a hiring solution that helps businesses attract, interview, and hire candidates in one place. More at Indeed.com slash hire. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. First, there's now a tentative deal between the Teamsters Union and United Parcel. The next phase begins in earnest on Monday, going through the nitty-gritty with 340,000 union members. Union leadership see the deal as a defining moment for the wider labor movement. Business groups, which have been worried about what a UPS strike would do to supply chains, are expressing relief. Here's Marketplace's Nova Safo. The talks between UPS and the Teamsters had stalled for three weeks and resumed yesterday. At stake, a strike that could have cost the economy billions of dollars. Retailers were worried about the impact on the important back-to-school shopping season going on right now. And UPS could have lost business to rivals. All of this put pressure on the company, and the Teamsters said they won $30 billion in new money for workers. Arthur Wheaton is the director of labor studies at Cornell. They absolutely needed the threat of a strike to force UPS back to the bargaining table. Wheaton says the deal, which apparently raises pay as much as 48 percent for part-time workers, will likely set a precedent. So seeing that the big company making huge profits had to pay more towards wages, that can help elevate other companies to say, yeah, well, that's just the trend we're in. That's where we're at. We will have to do the same. Unionized UPS workers will have until August 22 to vote on the deal. I'm Nova Safo for Marketplace. The advertising slump at Google Alphabet came to an end in the spring. Ad sales were up 3% more than expected April through June. This is partly the recession that never came, but also a sign of Google's enduring strength despite artificial intelligence-powered competition breathing at the door. Marketplace's Lily Jamali has that. Some of last year's biggest ad spenders were crypto companies. Remember them? Well, they're not spending quite so much these days. Neither are rapid delivery companies. NYU Stern professor Paul Hardart says you can thank higher interest rates for that. The cost of money has gone up, and that's sort of the intention of the Fed, and that reverberates through the entire economy, including advertising. Big ad agencies are seeing less spending from tech and telecom companies, but pharmaceutical firms, car makers, and food and beverage companies are picking up some of the slack by spending more with those ad agencies. Meanwhile, Hardart says tech titans like Meta and Alphabet, which are also major players in the ad business, are serving up two things every advertiser wants, better targeting and large audiences. I'm Lily Jamali for Marketplace. Alphabet stock is up 6% in pre-market trading now. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ futures are all down in the 2 to 3 tenths of a percent. In about seven hours, we'll hear from the Federal Reserve about interest rates. Expect another one quarter of a percentage point increase. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business. From small business to big enterprise and everything in between, Amazon Business helps simplify the supplies buying process. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. And by C3 AI. C3 Generative AI provides chat GPT enterprise search that is verifiable, secure, and accurate across all enterprise data. C3.AI. This is Enterprise AI. And by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers what's next in cybersecurity innovation to protect today's digital way of life. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. Now to unpaid people helping us when we're older. M.T. Connolly is an elder rights advocate, a lawyer, and a MacArthur Genius Grant winner. Her book out this week is called The Measure of Our Age, Navigating Safety, Money, and Meaning Later in Life. Welcome back to the program. Great to be back. Thanks. You know what supports a lot of us in older age is what you call the shadow care industry. These are people who are not getting paid but are spending a lot of hours helping us. That's right. One of the things that's happening is that as we live longer, a lot more of us are going to need care. And what a lot of Americans aren't aware of is that Medicare and most health insurance plans don't cover long-term care. And most people want to age at home and get care at home. And so what that means is that we rely primarily on family caregivers. And it's an astonishing number of them, approximately 40 million family caregivers 
are providing a significant amount of care with an estimated value of about $500 billion a year and similarly an estimated cost to them and lost income of $500 billion a year. Right. So if you don't have a broken hip, you're living along, but you can't live alone, Medicare is not going to pay for that in these United States. That's correct. And the other way this shakes out that really was kind of a revelation to me as I learned more about it was that if you have cancer and you're getting chemo or if you fall and have a broken hip, Medicare will cover a lot of the care for those conditions. If you have Alzheimer's or some other kind of dementia and you need more custodial care or more help around the house to make sure you're not leaving the gas on or something like that. Medicare doesn't cover that. And so families are really pretty much on their own for cognitive incapacity kinds of care. By the way, of that 40 million people who are in this shadow care industry, if you want to call it that, this isn't looking in on dad or mom on a Sunday. The definition of someone who's a caregiver in that 40 million statistic is someone who's really investing a lot of time. About 24 hours a week, yes. It's, it's really significant. And I think one other thing about caregiving is that it ends up being too much of a solo activity when really it should be a team sport. Yeah, I mean, it really does have to get thought out. I was talking to a physician not too long ago, and they always talk about there's often a kid who's doing most of the caregiving, and the other kid who lives three time zones away is the one with the biggest, deepest, sharpest opinions about mom or dad's care. One of the things that's critical is for us to think about and prepare for aging much sooner than we do, and then to have those conversations as families and in our relationships to say, okay, what's expected of whom and what's fair in terms of the allocation? Yeah, difficult but important conversations. M.T. Connolly's book, The Measure of Our Age, Navigating Care, Safety, Money, and Meaning Later in Life. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, David. And in New York, I'm David Brancaccio. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.